Welcome to the Promoting Educational Partnerships for Learning series. These segments have been created by the Regional Professional Development Schools Program in the Seidel School of Education and Professional Studies at Salisbury University in Salisbury, Maryland. The following segment on co-teaching with college student interns will highlight the many benefits and long-term rewards that a collaborative internship experience can bring to everyone involved. This segment depicts real classroom examples that feature co-planning and co-teaching. When it comes down to it, we all know that as teachers and mentors, our goal is to help students become successful learners. Co-teaching and a collaborative internship is a value-added approach to successful teaching and learning. A huge benefit that I've realized over the years, two teachers, not teacher and student teacher. Right. And the kids pick up on that. Mm -hmm. But they they never look back at me with this model. The kids don't look back at me as, oh, let's see what the teacher mm -hmm. says. Right. Because they see us on an equal playing field mm -hmm. because of the collaboration. Right. Right. And I think that's probably one of the biggest benefits, too. But the plane might wish he could get out of the air, saying, I wish I, I could think probably like that people right. might be hesitant thinking classroom management issues right. with this kind of model, but we've actually seen the opposite. Instead of them not being prepared to take on a classroom and all its issues as far as management is concerned, they're more prepared because they've had the longer opportunity to model and witness and act within safe confines. Right. So they can Good build point. their repertoire of their bag of tricks and feel safe in using them. And that's exactly where I was headed. Do you think she's going to be prepared to take on her own classroom when she becomes a teacher? And I think you just answered that beautifully. So then the question goes to you. Do you feel like you're going to be prepared? I do. Absolutely, I do. And um, this class has been a great experience in helping me become prepared, you know. You'll follow your track through twists and through bends and stop at new stops and pick up new friends. All right. Um, what benefits do the two of you see working collaboratively, where both of you stay engaged in the instructional process? The benefits are most for the kids. Um, my gosh, the differentiated instruction that we can have, um, having someone else to help you with assessment, different eyes looking at the same scenario, giving their input. Um, it's, it's, there isn't anything that isn't a benefit. There's no drawbacks to it. What, what do you think? Help me out with the thinking. I like it because it's sort of a tag team thing, and I was always explaining to Angie that if I can't get the children to understand something, I can always say, well, what do you feel, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Sullivan? And she mm -hmm. can yes. jump on in, or I can mm -hmm. jump on in with mm -hmm. things that we just pop into mm -hmm. our So she kind of, well, you clarify each other. Right? Yes. So that yes. the kids hear two yes. different points of view. Yes. You do like some think alouds, like I would do it this way, and uh, yes. We think aloud a lot, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, smaller group instruction, a lot of times if we're going to do the same lesson, we do, we both do it with a small group. Split. So they get more one-on-one -on -one attention, big time. Yeah. And something else we didn't say about the collaboration, another benefit, is the planning. Yes. Oh, the pl She's such a good pump mm -hmm. for me, and I can give her my expertise mm -hmm. through the years. So right. it's a beautiful balance between the expertise and, and her enthusiasm is just starting out as a teacher. And so we, basically I went over everything in a large group and then we broke into sets of two and sat at our desks and I handed out the scoops just so that I had control and m and So you're going to recap that to start yes. with? Okay. We're going to basically have them recap and explain to you what they did that you they can explain it to you and you have an understanding of what they did through their words, not just mine. Using tally marks and seeing how many colors we had of each item that we had. What items did we use yesterday, Kyle? M&M's. Oh. And how, well, how did you get the m And then basically what I think we'll do is we'll sort of um, sum it all up by um, taking 
the M&Ms again mm -hmm. and doing one scoop at random, mm -hmm. but then planting one where I'll choose the different colors. My first plate, I'm going to choose the colors. I want five red. One, two, three. Now for my second one, I'm going to put these back in. I'll just do a handful. Maybe another handful. Boys and girls, if I were to put both of these into these bags, <coughs> that's where the they'll ca I'll get them to um, tell me, well, would I get the same results? Right. And hopefully, what's the likelihood? Of getting what's the likelihood? It? And hopefully, they will tell me, well, one, you chose how many mm -hmm. of each color, and the other was done at random. Remember the terms, more likely, meaning probably, mm -hmm. equally, equally likely, and, and what's less less likely? Likely. What do you think, bud? What do you think, bud? Look at that plate. The question is, are you more likely equally likely or less likely to draw a blue if all those m and were in a bag? I was thinking it's more likely. I agree. How come? Because they are more blues. Now remember, let's I take a look at that definition of probability again. Sure. Chapter. It's right down there on your desk. Now let's see. What does that say again? Hmm. I am surprised. How many people Probability. I really thought we'd get some oh. oh. we get Can one we one read one. this all together? Can everyone see this? Ready? What, what someone thinks may happen. So, it's <coughs> prediction. After you do your thing, and then I jumped in with the twist, Okay. then what we'll do is they're going to be divided into partners. Yes. For the spinner. Sure. So then you and I can float among them. Right. Now, do we just want to do the partners that they have right now? Would that be easier, or should we do at random with our um, cotton and cards? I think. I don't know. What do you think? See how it goes. Maybe. It just doesn't feel. It doesn't really just matter. Just feel how the energy is after CTBS. This class has been a great experience in helping me become prepared. You know, I have a very good bag of tricks so far. They've worked so good and you know it's positive reinforcement is my biggest key um, strategy when I'm working with kids and using my classroom management skills. So I'm ready. I'm excited too. You've just seen a brief glimpse of what it looks like to co-teach with a student intern or candidate in your classroom. When the mentor teacher and the student intern remain engaged in instruction, there's no limit to learning, and the process doesn't have to be intimidating or complex. Did you notice in the video that co-teaching can be as simple as grazing and sharing the stage during lesson delivery? As you become more comfortable with the concept of co-teaching, you may desire to tackle more ambitious lessons or try activities with many moving parts. The sky is the limit when it comes to co-teaching possibilities. Take any good teaching strategy you already employ in your classroom, add an additional human resource, and the end result is sure to be effective. The main point to remember when you host a Salisbury University student intern is that the real focus is on improved learning for all. We want to help you and your school make a difference in learning for your students, while at the same time help us to prepare the next generation of outstanding teachers. It's a win-win for everyone involved.